through that press conference, Vinny, if you see how the Royals are playing at the end of the year and that inspires confidence to go into next year and they're like, hey, man, we see we put it kind of all together at the end of the year. That's what we're going to be trying to do for 2024. I feel the opposite can be happening for the White Sox. Another embarrassing loss, 15 to 4 today. I don't know why, and I know that they have stated that Pedro is coming back for next year, but seeing all how this team has kind of quit and how they have shown lack of effort, just won the first series in a long time this past weekend in Boston. Is there a way, do you feel? that Chris could change his mind at the end of the year if he keeps on continuing seeing a lack of effort, a lack of focus by this White Sox team and change managers or and or coaching staff here with the White Sox. Well, the coaching staff was one of the questions he was asked that we played the answer to, and he said they haven't decided on that yet. Um, Pedro has been decided on. That was part of Chris's opening press conference. He was asked, is he coming back next year? And he said yes. So um, I don't expect that to change. What I think what I think changes on that front, though, Herb, would be players. And he was asked about, uh, you know, kind of the core group and, and, and whether big changes are needed to be made there. And he said basically what he said in his pre- opening press conference when he said no one was untouchable, he said this time around that we'll – We'll look at it, and it, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, you know, say that someone has to stay because you know they've been here for a while, you know. And so I think that kind of goes counter, maybe a little bit to what Jerry Reinsdorf was saying when he was saying how much he believed in what he called the foundation of this team. Um, but you know, we've heard we heard from Rick Hahn at the trade deadline saying, "Listen, this hasn't worked. We would be foolish and ridiculous to not consider." breaking this up in some way to, 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 to try to make it work. And I think you could maybe see that from Chris Getz this winter. I think Tim Anderson is the, is the player to look at from the words that we've heard from Chris Getz. Not that it's going to go one way or the other. He says they're not decided. But, boy, you're not hearing a definitive, we would like to have Tim Anderson back on this team next year from Chris Getz. You're hearing, we're going to have to have a lot of conversations with T.A., and T.A. has been good, and he's been here for a while, and we know what he can do, but we're going to have to talk about it. It's kind of wishy-washy to me, and and I think that you know it, it took something that you and I, Herb, figured should be a slam dunk, bringing Tim Anderson back at what is relatively a reasonable price point, Um yeah, he's coming off the worst year of his career, but what could he be? He's been an all-star level player in the past. If you're trying to compete next year, it would be nice to have one of those. Um, and now we're what we're hearing makes it sound like it's not a slam dunk at the very least. And so um, whether that ends up being the case or not, we'll find out. But the main thing I keep coming back to, and you heard that word be brought up in a question to Chris Getz in that clip that we played, rebuild, right? Very definitive from Jerry, doesn't want to do that. Very definitive from Pedro, they're not doing that. Chris Getz is painting a picture, in my opinion, with all of the lack of committing to certain things, that this is where that could end up. Maybe not, ex- maybe certainly not something like we saw that took five, six, seven, eight years with Rick, with what Rick Hahn was doing, but if you have so many players to, to go get to fill out a team that is going to contend, and then you get rid of Tim Anderson, and then you maybe get rid of another core player because this is what you're talking about, that's that's a rebuild to me. The team is not good enough to not be rebuilding, right? If you're sitting here waiting for Colson Montgomery or waiting for you know a lot of these pitchers that they have at AA, that to me looks like a rebuild. Now, maybe it's only a rebuild that lasts you know, six months, or maybe it's only a rebuild that, you know, they're back in 2025. That's fine. You can call it whatever you want Define rebuild, however you want, but there's so many holes on this roster right now. And we're talking about the possibility of there being more created. I mean, where, where does that, where does that end up? And I think the answer is, well, we'll see come spring training when Chris Getz has done all that he can do in the off season. And we'll see what that adds up to. Um, it's a lot of work, and if you're going to create more work for yourself, that that makes even more work, and that makes it pay, perhaps get, you get further from contending and closer to that rebuild area. I don't know. He didn't say that, certainly. You know, he didn't use that word. He's not saying, oh, this could end up being bad kind of thing or something like that, but it, it looks like that's a, at least you've got to think about that possibility when you're getting these non-committal answers like this. That's my thought. 
and I have said this, and you said it too, Vinny, that we want Tim Anderson to re-sign his uh, option for the White Sox to have it for next year, $14 million, I believe it is. With that being said, today, again, Tim Anderson's lack of focus, that's what I'll harp on. Ball hit to Elvis Andres, a ball that was probably not going to be a double play because the runner running down first base. But he, Tim Anderson, receives the ball while his foot is no longer on second base. The neighborhood play has been way gone, way gone in Major League Baseball. Maybe in the past you can get this, but we've seen this multiple times this year where Tim's focus is not on where it needs to be. His foot needs to be on the bag before he throws the ball to first base. Those are the things that I get mad at, Tim. The bad years are going to happen. Slumps are going to happen to every Major League Baseball player. But the professionalism, the focus, the if you're in the lineup, give me all of what you have. And sometimes I feel, especially this year, that Tim Anderson has not given all that he has. So if Chris Getz is wishy-washy on the player, I say sign him and find a trade partner somewhere else. The fact that you just release him or don't re-sign him or don't tender him an offer, I think would be a mistake because you're getting nothing back for the player. But if they don't want the player back because of efforts like that, I can understand that because it's happened far too many times this year for me, Vinny. But real quick, Vinny, I mean, like, also, too, like, wouldn't we have seen if they would be able to pick up the option and then trade him? Like, wouldn't have someone traded for him at the deadline this year? I mean, he means so much to the Sox. I know you touched upon that in your article. He was hurt. He was hurt. I, I, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that you can say with certainty there were teams out there lining up to give the White Sox Tim Anderson value for Tim Anderson. He was hurt. He was. He's having the middle. He's in the middle of the worst year of his career. That is the definition of selling low. And especially when you have the option, like Herb was just saying, of bringing him back for next year, rolling the dice, and hoping it's just better. Yeah. Hoping that he's healthy, hoping that he's showing you something or showing other teams something. Come next deadline, trade him then, right? I mean, that, then, and you're going to get so much more back in return. That would have been the definition of selling low. They did not do that with any of the players that they did trade. They even managed to get a reasonable value, good value even for Lance Lynn, you know, who was in the middle of a poor season. But, uh, you know, that would have been with all the position players. There's a reason that the only position player traded at the deadline was Jake Berger because he was the guy who was having the good year. He was the guy that you could sell high on, if you want to call it that. The White Sox could not sell high on Tim Anderson. They could not sell high on Aloy Jimenez. They could not sell high on Yoan Moncada. And I'm not saying they wanted to trade all those players, but if you were drawing up a trade at the deadline for any one of those guys, you're talking about bottom value for guys that you've you've built your team around, that you've invested so much money in as, as cornerstones of a rebuilding project. Now, that obviously hasn't ever worked it it didn't get up off the ground that rebuilding project but you can't just say give me a bag of balls and let me start over you know what i mean you got to try to get something that is worth a guy who's been to an all-star game two times and won a batting title uh you know who's who's provided the biggest moments that your team has experienced here in the last five years um this is you know you we can talk about him meaning more to the white Sox than any other team sure but he's got to mean something to, to get back what you were going to get, whether you're trading him at the trade deadline last year, in the offseason this year, or at the trade deadline next year. I mean, yesterday's price is not today's price. So, again, I, I don't know if that, that price for the two-time shortstop and batting title uh, champ will come back. But, again, you know, Mike but Sox Thompson That's what you roll the dice on. That's what right. you roll the dice on if you pick up the option, right? Well, and, yeah, and White Sox Tom says Anderson doesn't want to be here. You can see it. I mean, that when Chris says – here with TA, a player that we've known for a stretch and we've seen the ups and downs and we know what the potential is. That's a conversation that certainly isn't taken delicately and perhaps a conversation that is going to be more than just one sit down. TA deserves that. Chris Getz might sit him down at the end of the season and say, hey, we have to make this you know, decision by X date. We will give you the full time to make that decision. And if you come to us at that date and say you don't want to be here anymore and you want to be let go to explore your options, we'll give you the respect to do that. Because he also says that he wants to create competition. So if a guy doesn't want to be here and you're forcing him to play for your team, that's not really competitive. I mean, that sound, sounds like the opposite of competition. You know, maybe you respect TA because he's done so much for the op- the organization and you let him go find a new home and, and you know, explore the 20 other, 29 other teams. But then if he says, no, like, this is my team, I want to be the shortstop, pick up the option and say, hey, we're going to pick up the option. And if you look right, 
we'll roll the dice. But if not, we'll find you a place by July. And this is a thing where Pedro talks about the world culture and it cringe every time I hear it. But if you're trying to create culture and the leader who I think Tim would be, he's the player who I would look at, especially with Luis Robert not in the lineup anymore, as the guy who's been here the longest. And this is the standard that White Sox baseball should be. If Chris Getz and Pedro Grafal want to create the culture of this is White Sox baseball, what Tim Anderson has done and a couple of those lackadaisical plays would not stand for. I could not have. And so if you want to ship them out after that, just so you can change scenery and have a better clubhouse, and I don't know how the clubhouse is, whatever it is, I could see that. And that that would be fine with me if they said that afterwards and said, hey, man, Tim's going to be a good player. Just like, um, and I parallel this to the Bears too, Jalen Carter's having an ass-kickingly great rookie year. He's probably going to be the defensive rookie of the year. I said the Bears could not draft that guy because he would be a distraction so much in the locker room. He's not a base, He's not a football player who shows up for his job interview, which he pretty much failed the NFL combine because he had other things like his uh, uh, court proceedings having uh, to do in Georgia back then. And you can take the fact that that player is going to be a good player away from you but he's not a good mixture in your clubhouse or in your locker room. So I have no fault to the Bears for not taking Jalen Carter because I know that player wouldn't be the same player here. And I also think that player is a destructive force in the Bears locker room specifically. And that might be the same thing and maybe not destructive for Tim. But if the players are looking at him and saying, man, this is the third, fourth time I've seen Tim not touch second base on a routine force play. Should I be that? Should I, is that what I'm aspiring to? Right. And if you get rid of that and you show the players, hey, Tim's a great player, two-time All-Star, got the corn game walk-off, et cetera, et cetera. But the lack of focus this year, the lack of professionalism this year at times, we cannot have it, and they ship them out. I think that would look well in the Pedro Gafal, Chris Getz type of like moving forward and their culture, that would actually speak to it. Because I haven't necessarily seen Pedro talk about Tim and say the things that he would say about Oscar Kolask. And they've had similar gaffes this year. And I know Tim's the veteran and Oscar's a rookie, but accountability is accountability. So send him out if you need to. to Send a message to the rest of the players. Like, we need 100% effort every time you're out there. And, I mean, too, Sleepy Harold brings it up, and we could take a break after this. Um, there was the 11 games before the Minnesota injury this year with Hanser Alberto. Remember him? Uh, Tim was hitting 298, 327, 404 with an OPS of 731. Uh, and he did have 14 hits and five uh, doubles. So there was a little bit of pop there. But Sleepy Harold taking a little bit more of a, a zoomed-out focus mm-hmm. here. Nearly 700 plate appearances, 685, 248, 289. 298 slugging, uh, an OPS of 587 for Tim, a weighted runs created plus of 63, Bad. an o- ISO of .050, and uh, that's your slugging divide, uh, minus, minus your uh, average, uh, and two home runs. And then you look at the DRS, negative uh, seven defensive run saves last season, negative 16 defensive run saves this season, and negative than baseball. two outs above average last year, and negative four outs above average this year. It has been ugly for Tim. So even if he doesn't want to be here, uh, the play really isn't speaking up to Tim uh, in the past year or so. 